Bonjour, you are welcome to Best Great Tutorials. In this video, we are going to look at business mathematics. Specifically, we are going to look at differentiation. Now, differentiation comes from calculus, which is an amalgam of two very important topics. We have differentiation, then integration. But in this video, we are going to focus on differentiation. Okay. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the video, like it, and share it with your friends. At Best Great Tutorials, we believe that you rise by lifting others. So let's dive in. Okay, so when we talk about differentiation, we are saying that we want to find the rate of change of one quantity with respect to another quantity. Okay, so differentiation simply means the rate of change. of one quantity with respect to with respect to another. So when we talk about differentiation, we just want to know how one quantity changes with respect to another. So if you are sitting at the bank, how does your money, your gross money at the bank changes with respect to time? Okay. If you are covering a particular distance, how do you cover that distance? Okay. What is the rate of your coverage of that distance with respect to time? So that's what you mean by what? Differentiation. Differentiation. Now, in mathematics, we can represent differentiation by these two notations. We can say dy dx. Okay, so when you look at dy dx, we are looking at differentiation. The change in y with respect to what change in what x. Okay, dy dx. Now we also have the functional notation, which is f prime of s. They all mean the same thing. Okay, so as we are using them interchangeably, don't get confused. Dy dx refers to change in y with respect to change in what x. The graph f prime of s means that you are finding the differentiation of the f or the function. Okay, you are looking at the differentiation of the function. Now there are some basic rules of differentiation, so let's dive in. Alright. Now the first rule that we are going to look at is the constant rule. Okay. In mathematics, we know that constant is any number without any variable attached to it. So if I write 2, okay, it's a constant. If I write negative 5, it's a constant. So how do we differentiate that? Now don't forget that we said that differentiation is the rate of change of one quantity. But a constant is a number which is not changing because there's no variable attached to it. It's not a variable. It means that for constant, it does not change. Therefore, when you're differentiating a constant, for example, if you have y is equal to k, this k is a constant. If you are differentiating, say dy dx. If you are differentiating this k, which is a constant, that will give you zero. It is giving you zero because constant is a constant. It does not change. Differentiation is a rate of change. Okay, so a constant does not change. Therefore, the rate of change in a constant is zero. Now we are going to also prove that mathematically subsequently. Don't worry, don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Now, what if you have a linear term? So, for example, if you have a, um, so you have a linear term. So let's say y is equal to a x. Now, this is, is a linear term because the highest exponent of the variable here is one. Okay, so there's a one here. And this is the coefficient of the variable. So we are saying that if you have a linear term and you are trying to differentiate y with respect to s, any time you differentiate a linear term, you are going to get a constant. Any time you differentiate a linear term, you are going to get a coefficient here or the constant. So if you have dy ds, that is going to give you just x. Okay. So if you have a linear term and you differentiate it, you are going to get a constant. That one also, you are going to prove it. So don't worry about it. Now, let's say you have y is equal to 2x. Now, this is a linear term because the highest exponent here is 1. So if you are differentiating y is equal to 2x, 
Then we say that dy dx will be equal to 2. Just this one. Okay? Now, if you have y is equal to negative 5x, this is a linear term. Any time you differentiate a linear term, you get the constant. So that gives you y is equal to negative 5. As simple as that. I hope you are getting it. So if you differentiate a constant, you get 0. But if you differentiate a linear term, you get uh, the constant. Okay, so here's A. Sorry, here's A. That's great. So anytime you differentiate a linear term, you get a constant, which is A. If you differentiate 2s, you get 2. If you differentiate negative 5s, you get negative 5. Alright. Now let's look at one which will bring us back to these two that I've talked about. The term that we are going to look at is the power rule. The power rule. That is very, very important. The power rule. Let's say we have y is equal to a of <coughs> as to the power n. Okay? If you have y is equal to a as to the power n, then we are saying that if we want to differentiate this one, where well, the power is more than what? 1. So that brings us to the power rule. If the power is more than 1, we use the power rule. <coughs> if you want to differentiate this function, what you are going to do is that you bring the power down, then you subtract 1. So you are going to have y is equal to n times a s is equal to n. Then you take 1 from it. Okay? So it is times and take. Times and take. You multiply the function by the power here, okay? Then you take one from it, times and take. So if you have y is equal to, let's say, 2s p, okay? And you want to differentiate y with respect to x, then we are going to have dy dx to be equal to times and take, times and take. So we're going to have three, these three will come down. Times 2s is more than three. Times and what? Take. So you have, we take one here. So that will give you 6x, three minus one give me two. So you have dy x is equal to 6s squared, okay? Now, let's say you have um, f of x, is equal to, let's say you have uh, negative 6 x raised to the power 4. Negative 6 raised to the power, x raised to the power 4. Therefore, if you want to find f prime of x, don't forget, f prime of s is the same as y s. There are two different notations, okay? Either you use the y ds or you can say f prime of x. So, if you are finding f prime of s, this is the power here, the exponent here, which is greater than 1. So we are going to use the power rule. What do we do? It is times a take. Times a take. So this one will come down to multiply. So you have 4 times negative 6, x to the power 4, times and what? Take. So we take 1 from it. So we are going to have f prime of x to be equal to negative 24 x we use the power 4 minus 1, which is what? 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that is the power rule. That is the power rule. You times and you what? You take. Now, having done the power rule, then we can come back to the constant rule to prove to you. Don't forget, I told you that I will prove it to you why anytime you differentiate a constant, you get what? 0. So let's look at it. Now, this is the constant here, y is equal to k. From the basic knowledge of indices, we know that any number, okay, has an invisible variable attached to it. So if you have 2, these two can be written as 2s to the power 0. So a number 2 can be written as 2s to the power 0. Because s to the power 0 is just 1, okay? Any number raised to the power 0 is just 
one. So two s is the power zero. It's just two. Okay. If that's the case, then we can say that this k can be rewritten as y is equal to k s to the power of zero. If that's the case and you really understand, then we can apply the power rule. Okay, we can apply the power rule. The power rule says that times and what take. So you can say that dy dx is going to times. So this zero will come down. You are going to have zero times ks to the power of zero minus one. But we know that zero times any number is what zero. So if you differentiate a constant, you are going to get zero. And that's what I'm proving mathematically. Okay? Great. Then let's come to the linear term. Let's come to the linear term. We said that a linear term is any expression with the highest exponent of the variable being 1. So a is equal to, let's say, a s raised to the power of 1. Now, most of the times we don't find the 1 because it, it is, uh, we can just ignore it. But because I want to prove it to you, I've got the 1 here. So this is a linear term because the highest exponent here is what? 1. If you want to prove it, why every time you differentiate a linear term, you are going to get a constant? There's it. Don't forget, for the linear, for the power rule, it says that times and what? Take. So you are going to have dy dx be equal to this one will come down. So you have 1 multiplying a s raised to the power, then you are going to have 1 minus what? 1. It is times and what take. So this one will come down, then take one from it. So you are going to have a s to the power of zero. One minus one is zero. Now s to the power of zero is what one. Okay. So you are going to have dy dx is equal to what? a. So every time you differentiate a linear term, you are going to get what a constant, and that's what I'm proving. So if you have y is equal to 5s, dy dx is just going to give you what? 5. If you differentiate a linear term, you are going to get what? A constant. That is great. Now, if you really understand it, then we can have two or more functions which are either added or subtracting. So let's look at how we differentiate that. And that one is called the sum or the what? Difference rule. The sum or the difference rule. So let's look at some of these things. Okay, so let's look at the sum or difference rule. The sum or difference rule. So in a situation where you have two functions added, okay, then you can use the sum or what difference rule. They can either add or what subtract, obviously. So let's say you have a uh, y is equal to let's say f of x plus g of x okay so you have two different functions which are added how do you differentiate it for you to differentiate it you will actually take each of the functions separately and work with it okay so that's simple so you can say that dy dx be equal to f prime of x plus j prime of x now f prime of s means that we are differentiating the f function, okay? Then j prime of s means that we are differentiating what the j function. So it is so simple, all right? Now, example. If you have y is equal to 2s p plus let's say 5. These are two functions here, okay? So we work with it separately. We work with it separately. So we can say that dy dx will be equal to, we are going to differentiate this one, then when we finish, we also differentiate this one and add it. So it is f prime of s. So in this case, our f of s is 2s p, then our g of s is what? 5. Now, if we want to differentiate 2s p, we are going to apply the power rule times and take. So you multiply the function by the exponent here. So you're going to have 3 times 2s raised to the power 3 times and what? Take. So you take 1 from it. 
So we've differentiated the first function. Plus, if you differentiate the second function, which is a constant here, what are you going to get? We are going to get what? Zero. Okay? Any time you differentiate a constant, you get what? Zero. So this one is a zero. That means dy ds will be equal to 6s raised to the power of 2. Okay? 6s raised to the power 2. Let's work around it and see. So let's say we have y is equal to negative 17s squared plus 2s raised to the power 5 minus 13 s raised to the power 3 plus 6 okay plus 6 and we want to differentiate this function okay so how do we do it you will take each one of them separately each one of them separately then what you differentiate it so you're going to have dy dx will be equal to when you differentiate this one what are you going to get it is the power rule. So times and what take. These two will come to multiply. So you're going to have 2 times negative 17 s raised to the power 2 times and what take. So you take one from it. Plus this 5 will come and multiply. So you're going to have 5 times 2 s raised to the power 2, 5 minus 1. Then you're going to have 3 times this 3 will come and multiply. 13 s raised to the power 3 minus 1 plus when you differentiate this constant, what are you going to get? 0. <coughs> okay. Then you work around it. So dy dx is going to be 2 times this 72 will be negative 34 x. 2 minus 1 is just 1, so you can leave it that. Plus 5 times 2 give you 10, s is the power 5 minus 1 is what? 4. Minus 3 times 32 will give you what? That's 39, s is the power 2 and 0. So we are done with it. Okay. So this is just the sum and the what? Difference. To. It's nothing what? Difficult. We are just putting the things that we blend together, the constant to the linear term and the what? Power rule. I hope. This video has actually set the foundation for you. In the next video, we are going to look at more advanced rules, okay, such as the product rule, then we look at the chain rule, the quotient rule, and, the, and even more advanced, which is the natural log rule and the natural exponential functions. So stick and stay with us. Watch out for the part two of this video. At best rate, we rise by lifting others. See you.